I bought a brand new camera. What is it? But more importantly, why? Let's talk about it. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Rusty Brown Photography. I'm Rusty. I am so glad you guys are here. And as I indicated, yes, I have purchased a brand new camera. Um, I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to show you what it is. Uh, I'm going to start off talking about the why, though. Why would I buy a brand new camera, especially right now? Uh, before we get into that, hopefully everybody's had a really good year. This has been the year that we've been focused on becoming better photographers. I don't know where the year went. It seems like it was just yesterday. It was early summer and we were outside with long days. At least now here on the East Coast, it's dark at 5 o'clock in the evening. So I'm hoping that your year and your year's progression has been in line with where you wanted to be as a photographer. And if it has, awesome. If it hasn't, that's cool. We got nothing but time. We can continue to work on that. So what I wanted to talk about today is some of the logic that I used um, in buying a camera that I really hadn't planned on buying, but that I thought I might have to make this move. So let me first tell you what happened. Recently, I went online to um, you know see if there was another firmware upgrade for my camera for those of you guys who don't know I'm a Sony shooter but Sony I'll say DSLR but it's really SLT which is Sony's version of a DSLR uh, so I shoot Sony Alpha 99 Mark II um, which is a you know full frame camera A mount glass which is the non E mount so it's a little bit bigger right so I went online to check to see if there was any firmware upgrades. I try to do that once a year to see if there's any new feature sets. And when I went there, I stumbled on the fact that uh, Sony has discontinued the, the A99 product line. You, you, you know what I mean? Just stop making it all together. While I'm waiting on the A99 Mark III to come out, Sony basically said, that's it, we're done with DSLRs. We're also done with uh, A-mount glass. So needless to say, that, that took me back a little bit. So I took a day to try to figure out, okay, what's, what's going to be the play here? You know, um, and apparently, Sony made this announcement in May of last year, just to give you an idea of how far off I am. Keep in mind, last time I did a firmware upgrade was in March of last year. So in March of last year, when I go to the Sony site, which is where I would do my upgrades, I always scan the product line, see what's there. I saw the Sony, you know, that I have right now, the A99 Mark II, and I thought, man, it's kind of curious that in March of 2021, which is five years or so, almost five years after that product line launched, there was no mention of uh, Mark III in development or anything like that, which was a little concerning, but the product was still there. Um, and just two months later, apparently, was when they shut it down, but I was unaware of that. So once I learned that uh, the camera was no longer going to be made, the entire product line wasn't going to be made, I had to make a decision, you know, um, and I have friends, you know, some close friends that I know would say, this, this is your opportunity, go mirrorless, go small, do what you have to do. Um, but I wanted to examine all of my options. Uh, so at that point, I pretty much decided, you know, what it is that I'm going to buy, and I'll, I'll show you now. I bought this. Not, not, not the bag, but <laughs> what's in the bag, uh, and it's an interesting story as to why it's in this really nice Vivitar bag. But this is the camera that I bought once I realized that my current product line is made no more. Let's give it a look. Oh, it's wrapped really nice, nice bubble wrap in there. We take the bubble wrap off, yes. And now we're going to take it out of the plastic for the big reveal. And it is a Sony A99 Mark II. Look at that. A brand new Sony A99 Mark II. I currently shoot with the A99 Mark II. So yes, I bought the exact same camera that I already shoot with right now. All over again. Brand new now I'm going to explain, <laughs> explain what my, my, my thinking was, what the logic was in that, all right? The A99 Mark II has been an amazing camera for me. Um, I've done a lot with it. And you may remember, 
This is the original A99. The, so let's go back just a little bit, right? The Sony A99 SLT, the original, circa 2012, right? And then you may recall five years later in 2017, because I've talked about it a couple times, I bought this, the A99 Mark II. Now, the reason that I went from this to this isn't just because it was a Mark II, but because there were some significant changes in feature set, right? Number one, the original, maximum four frames a second in burst mode. The Mark II, 12 frames a second, right, in burst mode. Pretty impressive for this big guy. Secondly, the A99 Mark II is about 8.5% smaller than its predecessor. So bigger than a mirrorless, yes, but ergonomically perfect and not nearly as big as its original. Third, the original A99, 25 megapixels. The A99 Mark II, 42.5 megapixels. Another thing that the Mark II does that its predecessor did not is eye autofocus, auto eye focus, uh, you know, six of this, half dozen of that, whatever you want to call it, but the ability to automatically lock on a subject's eye when you're shooting and, and get it in focus. That was not one of the features on the, on the original camera. While the original camera, the original A99 does shoot video, um, it's 1080p HD, very nice. The Mark II, when it came out in late 16, early 17, 4K, 30 frames a second. Now, mind you, this is not a primary video camera, although I used to use this for what we're doing right now, uh, when, I, when I first started doing the channel, um, I don't do that anymore. In fact, I'm now shooting this on a Sony, but on a mirrorless, on the A6400, because it's better for video. So while I can capture 4K30 with the A99 Mark II, um, when it gets to the 29 minute mark, it has to generate another file, and it also is extremely hot. But those are some of the features that this has that the original didn't. So I didn't just jump to the two because the two was there. It was significantly better. Let's talk about how I found a brand new one. I immediately went online and started looking and some of my favorite places did not have the, the Mark II available. More specifically, B&H didn't have it, Adorama didn't have it. But I searched and I found it at a camera store in New York City. Let's take a look. Right here, I had never heard of uh, Willoughby's Camera Emporium, but I did find a brand new a99 Mark II there. I called them to talk to them about it. They had one left, which is why you saw it, you know, in the um, in the brand new Vivitar bag because they didn't have the original box. It was in a showcase. No one had ever come to buy it. You know, it's just, you know, not a lot of people shoot this camera anyway. They sold it to me for uh, $2,800, which is a good price. Now I also found it at another place in New York here, 42nd Street Photo. They still have it. And if you look here, theirs is $2,900. So I was prepared to go there if I couldn't find it um, at Willoughby's. An interesting thing is that uh, even though they, they didn't have the box, I assumed when he said they had the body and it was brand new and they could send it, that would be all that I got. But they actually had everything else that I needed in there. Um, you know, the brand new strap, still wrapped, I never use those. Something for the bag. Most importantly, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, the brand new battery uh, that you have to use with this camera, the specific Sony battery, and the full up charger. All this stuff, brand new, still wrapped in plastic. One of the options that I was prepared to go with in the event that I couldn't find it new at a reasonable price, and what I mean by reasonable price is this, check this out. This guy here is selling a brand new A99 Mark II for $7,000 and that just is not going to happen. There is no way that I was going to pay $7,000 for that. Just not going to happen, right? So I looked uh, and I found used bodies in a lot of different places, but the price ranges were all over the place, say $1,700 to $2,500, you know. And the problem that I have with that was I don't know how used is used. So for me, I really did want to go with something new. So one of the things that I found out when I was, you know, considering going used in the event that I couldn't find new at a decent price, and when I say decent price, remember, I paid $3,200, $3,250 in 2017 for the Mark II, and the new one that I just got, um, I got for $2,800. So up, up to what I, what I paid originally, I was, I was fine with. But uh, in the event that I couldn't find it, 
I was really going to go used. That's how much I did not want to change camera systems. But I didn't understand what used meant. Um, so I did some research and found out that your camera keeps track of what they call actuations. How many times does your shutter fire? And each camera manufacturer will tell you um, what, the, what the target number of times is that that, that process or that camera can fire um, and give you a ballpark idea of what you should expect from it. So um, low-end entry-level cameras may be up to 50,000 times. High-end, really, really, really high-end pro cameras, maybe a half a million times. Um, I'm also told that with programs like Lightroom, you take an image, somewhere in the EXIF data, apparently, within every photo is the actual number of that photo, meaning is this picture number 125 that was shot on camera XYZ? It's in there, but I looked and I couldn't find that. But uh, I did find two things, one site that was a plus and a minus, and one site that was an altogether plus, and I didn't know this, so I'm going to show it to you guys, and it could be a big help for you in determining how long to keep your camera, and if you're going to go buy used, how to test just how many times that camera has been fired. So first, let's take a look at the one that I say was a, uh, a plus and a minus. All right, so here we are, and what this site did was it helped me understand that each camera manufacturer basically has a target number of actuations that your camera should be able to hit. Um, and the first version of my, my original Sony A99 was supposedly guaranteed at up to 200,000 times that it would fire. Well, the A92 shutter count, I'll show you down here, a shutter life expectancy of 300,000 actuations, right? So that's, that's, that's great. Now, what you're supposed to be able to do right here is drag an image in and then this site will tell you um, how many times that that particular shutter has fired. But the problem with that site is you have to drop in what's called, it's asking you to drop in a unprocessed JPEG file. I don't have it, right? I mean, I shoot everything in RAW. Even the, and then if I took a RAW image that I've edited and, and exported as a JPEG, this system doesn't read it, and it doesn't read raw. No harm, no foul. The good news about this site is you can determine what the target number of times that your camera's processor should be able to fire. So what I took away from that that I really enjoyed was this new A99 Mark II, as well as my current A99 Mark II, should be good for up to 300,000 shots. Some will get you less, some will get you more. You know, it's, it's not a guarantee. but. Without being able to check it there, I found another site that I think you're going to like. Check this out. Okay, you can't get any simpler than what I've got on the screen right now, right? CameraShutterCount.com. You're going to want to bookmark that. You probably can't read everything in green, but everything in green are the different types of cameras that this thing can, can give you a, uh, an accurate count on, right? So as an example, what I want to do first is I want to, you know, let's go back to the very first A99, right? My original one. And I believe this was October of 2016, right? Which was a few months before, um, a few months before I bought the, the Mark II. So all you do is you follow it, you go in, you click it. I have one here called Volleyball 3927. It is a raw file. When I click upload, this tells me that that shot on my first A99, look closely right here, it gives you the type of camera it is. I had basically shot just under 56,000 shots as of October of 2016. Keep in mind, this version of the camera, according to Sony, is good up to 200,000. That's really, really good. So now let's take a look at the last thing that I shot with my current A99 Mark II. All you do is click on that. So let's go to the shots that I did a few weeks ago of Rocky. I'll take the last one, which was shot number, looks like 89.99. Click open. You notice that it comes up here on the camera shutter count site. The site is not uploading and keeping your photos, by the way. It's just reading enough data off of it to tell you. So from the A99 Mark II, the last shot that I took is shot number 41,694 keeping in mind that according to Sony, 
right? This guy is good for up to 300,000 shots. If I'm good 300,000 or maybe more, imagine that I should also be able to get 300,000 off the brand new one that I just bought from Willoughby's, right? So there really are two reasons why I decided to buy the exact same camera all over again, right? The first is that I don't know what your mirrorless or any other mirrorless can do that this can't do. So let's talk about some of the features which I believe are synonymous with both uh, DSLRs and mirrorless. Okay, so even in 2023, 42 megapixel full frame sensor, right? Um, it's got 399 focal plane phase detection auto focus points. Basically, there are 399 predetermined places on the sensor where autofocus can take place and another 79 hybrid which moves all around for, um, you know, things that are going to be in motion. I detect autofocus. That's fine. Look at the max ISO, 102,400, 12 frames a second. In, in burst mode if that's your thing. Five axis steady shot stabilization. That's in camera. We're not even talking about the, the stabilization that you get with some of these fantastic lenses, but just inside of the, um, just inside of, of the body. Built-in Wi-Fi, right? Dual memory, car dual memory card slots. One of the best battery lives of any camera that you're ever gonna have. And, and, and let's talk about that too. There is a place, there is a forum. So this is basically called DP Review. If you're not a member, real easy to join. It's a place for photographers. I've been a member for six or seven years. You can see here I'm logged in right here. But the beauty of DP Review is that you can find out all kinds of things, not just reviews, but you can, you can partner up with people that shoot like you with the types of cameras that you use. And the forums, if I just hover over forums, these are all the different forms that are out here. Me personally, I tend to go down to the bottom of the left side and I focus on the Sony Alpha and the A-mount talk, as well as some Sony Alpha ones up here on the top right. When I was looking to determine whether or not I was going to go and repeat the camera buy, I went to the forum to do some checking because, again, it's my fault that I missed the notification over a year ago. And once I told the guys on the forum that I found it, one of them mentioned like, hey, don't forget about batteries. I was like, oh, you're right, because this camera system has an amazing, amazing battery that it uses. So I immediately went out to Best Buy locally, and guess what? They didn't carry it anymore. Started to worry. But then I went to uh, B&H, and they had the originals again right there. I bought two of them. Keep in mind, I ordered these before the camera showed up, so Willoughby's gave me a brand new battery with it, and I got two more. And so that you understand what I'm talking about, this battery right here, you won't be able to see the bottom, but it's got a little piece of tape on it. It's called B1. This battery is one of the original batteries that I got with the first A99, still crushes it today. This battery, because I have a system, same one, I bought in 2017 when I got the new one. So I've got two batteries that I got with the, with the first one, two batteries that I got with the second one, I just got the two new batteries from B&H for the third one, and Willoughby sent me a brand new one, so seven batteries. I still use the first generation battery today. And when we talk about the different things that this does that a mirrorless doesn't, one of these batteries, no kidding, even the one back from 2012, will shoot all day, over 2,000 shots, six, seven hours from a full charge on down. I'm not making that up. These are some amazing, amazing batteries. So when I start looking at those features, right, the one that I didn't mention is that the, the, the DSLR in Sony speak was always a hybrid between traditional DSLR and mirrorless, meaning this has an EVF, not an OVF. So it's not an optical viewfinder, but it's an electronic viewfinder. And this predates the EVFs that have been put into the mirrorless systems, right? So when I look into this, I'm seeing, if I go into live view, I'm seeing everything as I shape it up. If I move anything in the triangle, right? The f-stop, the shutter speed, or the ISO, I can see it taking place in the electronic viewfinder. There is an exposure meter in the bottom that shows you when you're right on zero, when you're to the left of it, and it goes plus or minus five, so you know exactly if you're underexposed or overexposed or why. I can see the histogram, all of this before I take the shot, and it's programmable, so you can put what you want in your view, um, 
with a lot of stuff, which is a little bit too much, I don't want it cluttered, or nothing at all, it doesn't matter. So a full-blown DSLR that has an EVF with a five-axis in-body stabilization and auto eye focus. This, again, the very first A99, so over 10 years old, it was the originator of the fully articulating screen on the back. Nobody was doing this 10 years ago. And I mean fully articulating to the point where, you know, if you were into vlogging or whatever, you can see yourself right there in the return. Now, would I advocate walking around with this guy like this? Nope, a little too big, a little too heavy. But this is exactly how I shoot videos with you guys right now. And this same technology is on most of the mirrorless cameras. It's on the one that I'm shooting on right now. So I don't even use a return monitor here in the studio. I have it flipped up. I can see myself and I can see that I'm in that frame. I can see everything around me. I can see just how far to put something in the frame or when I take it out of the frame like that because of this return. That fully articulating screen on the back was groundbreaking 10 years ago. And it is still here today on the A99 Mark II. So again, if there were some major features that mirrorless had that would, you know, that would warrant me moving that direction, I would be there. But I still haven't found a feature that, um, that I don't have here. So the last reason that I wanted to stay with this system, obviously, um, was, was the glass here. Um, Sony's, I won't, I won't say high-end glass, but the glass that's above the entry-level glass is really, really good. Every lens that I have, and I don't have a lot of them, is either a Sony Zeiss lens or um, a Sony G Master, depending upon what, what it is. And I bought all of the lenses before I even bought my first Mark II, so I got it with the first, with the first um, A99. And they are still crushing it today. So if I were to go fully mirrorless on a smaller platform, I would either have to get that adapter that fits on the mirrorless one. And can you imagine putting this big boy on that little body? You know what I mean? It just, it just wouldn't work for me. Or, or I would have to just go and say, I'm going to buy a brand new mirrorless and build brand new lenses again. So spending $2,800, right, to save $11,000 to me was worth it, as opposed to buying a new, and, and I may screw this up, but either the uh, A7 IV, A7 R4, A9, and A1, they all range, I would say, between $3,500 and $6,500 within the new Sony mirrorless platform. That's just for the body, and if you have to spend another eleven dollars or 12000 because the value of these lenses has not dropped. Sony doesn't make any one of these anymore with the exception of the 85 1.4. You can still find this online. Everything else you cannot. So I've got a significant investment in these lenses that work perfectly well with this A-mount system camera, much, much the way it did with the first generation. So that had a lot to do with why I decided to, um, to stick with that system. I'm going to continue to shoot with this one. Again, less than 50,000 shots, 300,000 guaranteed or 300,000 targeted. Um, I'm going to shoot till the wheels fall off. This guy right here, while I still have support, and that's an important thing to remember, these cameras are no longer manufactured by Sony, but they are still supported by Sony. The lenses, even though they don't make those anymore, are still supported by Sony. If anything breaks even on the first one, I can send this into Sony and I have full coverage. Same thing with the new one. I don't know how long that's going to last, so all I'm doing with the new one is doing the firmware upgrade to it, and then it's getting rewrapped back in the bubble wrap, back in the package, and it'll stay there until such time that the one I'm currently using has a problem or doesn't work anymore. That way, if I can continue using my current one for five or six years before I have to stop using it, it that means basically it's gonna be five or six years before I start using this one that has no images taken on it. I did buy another lens, but it's not new, it's used, and I bought it from B&H. In fact, I'll show you this first. I don't know if you can see that, but it says used. This is the Sony Zeiss 24-70. They don't make it anymore in this model. I have one right here. Um, now, let me, let me explain. Let me go to the old one first. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. So this is not an SSM2 motor. SSM2 motor, like you have on the 7200, means that 
as you zoom, all of it's taking place inside the barrel, inside the can. Well, this is the older technology, so as you zoom, the lens moves, right? So my zoom ring here, it's totally, it just comes off. And I haven't been able to get it fixed in years. I have worn this lens out. I don't want to put super glue, super glue on it because I don't want to mess it up. I'm sure other camera shops have the same thing, but B&H used has a scale of 1 to 10. This clocked in at a 9. And if they didn't tell me it was a 9, I would think that it's brand new. Um, so because I've used this so much, and remember, all of these lenses, but most importantly this one, have been used since the very first Sony A-mount that I've gotten over 10 years ago, right? And it all started when I went to school for photography. One of the first classes that I had uh, back at the 101, 102 level was a project that, that basically said for the entire semester, no matter what the photo project is, you're only allowed to use one lens. I chose the 24-70. It was all I had at the time. After 16 weeks of shooting with this, I just felt like I could master it. I used it for sports, I used it for macro, I used it for portraiture, uh, I used it for landscape. It became my go-to lens. If you remember those numbers I showed you in the shutter count, between the first camera and the second, right, I have over 100,000 shots in the Sony system. I would venture to guess that 75% of everything I shot has been with this lens right here. It is a workhorse. I'm going to use the same methodology with the new 24 to 70 that I'm using with the new camera, meaning I'll just keep it and I'll keep it bagged up until this one can't go anymore. So it's quite possible that the new 24 to 70 would come out before the new camera comes out. This entire ecosystem is second nature to me. When I'm in the studio, I'm not thinking about the camera. I'm not thinking about, oh, what button does what? I see a lot of photographers who don't have mastery of, of, of their gear, I'll put it that way. And I think that's such a waste, especially if you have really good talent that you're shooting or you, you're in a, a once in a lifetime situation on a trip where you're going to see something beautiful. Um, you, know, you, you know, I shot the Pope. I shot the Pope, not, not with this Mark II, but with the original, with the old guy. I had this with me when I was in Italy, right? And, and, just being in the right place at the right time, he was only in the window for a small amount of time. And if I have to go look to figure out what's where, that's an opportunity gone. So because I'm so familiar with the ecosystem, and I'm not saying that I'm proud of Sony's menu system, it's a giant pain in the ass, but I understand it. So outside of the menu system, the ecosystem with this camera is second nature. We talked about the glass. I think it's the best in the world. So the fact that I don't have to think about my camera helps me be a better photographer because the thing that I'm most interested in is getting the shot, no matter the type of shots. And I'm going to end the video showing you a few shots that I've taken with just, just the Mark II. I've mastered the Sony A99 system so much so that in 11 years, I've only met one other person throughout my travels in photography that actually shoots in this system, and he has since gone Canon. I would venture to guess that none of you that are watching this shoot this, and that's okay. So that's the logic. Um, it, it's not going to make um, a ton of sense to everybody, but it made a, uh, a lot of sense to me. I have a brand new camera that I will be waiting several years to use that I'm intimately familiar with. I've got brand new batteries for that camera. I've got a lens system that's going to carry me until I'm done with photography. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So the, reason that I, the real reason that I bought a new camera is pretty simple. Sony stopped making the camera that I use. They stopped manufacturing it. I didn't want to go mirrorless. So my logic was I'll buy another one of the same thing and keep it moving. That is the logic behind buying the exact same camera again. There will be no Mark III in this camera's ecosystem. And, and I'm 100% satisfied with all the things that this camera can do, right? Um, so hit me in the comments, let me know if you think that that logic is sound or if you would have been in this situation would you have just punted everything, sold all your glass and just made a full, full blown, blown shift over to, uh, over to mirrorless. Um, like I said, I'll leave you with uh, about you know, two minutes here, maybe three of some shots that I've gotten with this and I think that's, that's the difference maker. Find what works for you. Right, what's going to help you get the shot? What's going to help your confidence? What's going to help you continue to grow? I've, I've worked with this. I've read more. I've um, 
talk to you guys a little bit more. I've picked up a few more subscribers. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me and the, and the growth of the channel. And I'm going to continue to do that all throughout 2023. I just wanted this year to really be focused on us taking a moment to stop and think about what little things can we do to become better. I hope you enjoy some of these shots. Um, if I don't talk to you before the end of the year, I hope you have a blessed and happy holiday season. Hope you didn't eat too much too long ago uh, uh, on Thanksgiving. Or if you did, I hope you enjoy hope you enjoyed uh, what you ate. So be well. We will talk again soon. God bless. Thanks.